And now, a live quark from Track Lord. Hi, how's it going, everyone? Uh, some of you may have already met me. My name is Track Lord. I work for a company called Matayo. Uh, Matayo is an augmented reality and computer vision company uh, specializing in research and applied applications of uh, augmented reality in everyday life. Uh, we've been doing this since about 2003. And like I said, you might have met me yesterday during the incredible race scavenger hunt, where you may have got to experience some of this really cool uh, mobile augmented reality. Uh, so one of the reasons we're here today is we're talking about disruptive technology. And one of the coolest things about augmented reality is that it is inherently disruptive uh, for one of the reasons that it just lets you do things that you couldn't have ever have done otherwise. And it seems a, a simple explanation, but also if you'd like to, uh, interesting, follow along on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter name is at tracklord, Ontario US, and of course, CCE. 2012, once again, thank you to Connect Enterprise for inviting me here. I've had a great time so far. I can only uh, uh, expect it's going to be even better for the rest of the weekend. So once again, returning to augmented reality uh, as a disruptive technology. When I first got into this, uh, the one word that I can think of was magic. The things that this technology just allows you to do uh, is just absolutely magical. And the effect it has on people uh, is incredible as well. It allows you to, I'm just going to, oop. See here, the, there we go, excellent. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna just show you a quick video of what is augmented reality, uh, really. Just press the oh, we back that video up a little bit. We're, we're throwing some spoilers out there. Uh, so essentially we made this to sort of showcase how the average person can use augmented reality in home. And as I was saying, this, this technology allows you to insert virtual and digital elements right into the real, real world. And with the advent of mobile technology, better uh, handsets, better processors, better tablets, uh, it's amazing the things that we can do even in your own home, wherever you are. Uh, so one of those things, of course, is uh, helping uh, attractive women install their wireless routers. Um, we're really good at that. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, uh, what we're seeing here is actual 3D object recognition. We talk about 3D in the augmented reality industry. We're not talking about uh, movies or Wrath of the Titans or anything like that. We're talking about actually recognizing complex 3D objects and overlaying digital content. So you can see right here we've got visualization. And this simple visualization, the ability to actually see something in real life uh, before interacting with it, we found has an uh, undeniable effect on informing and influencing decisions, especially in some cases purchasing decisions. But in general, if someone sees something in real life, there is that irrefutable psychological connection that they automatically have to it versus seeing it in a standard two-dimensional interface like a catalog or a magazine or something like that. Uh, the ability, once again, to insert digital information directly into the real world. Uh, for instance, Gunnar here is just going to build himself a patio furniture and then, you know, hopefully buy it. But And then the, also the ability to connect everyday objects or interactions with more information or things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. And of course, there is an entertainment aspect as well, back to the magical thing, the, the ability to actually interact in real time with people as well. It's funny, this is this, I've never seen this demo in real life. This is the only time I've ever seen it. I don't know if the guys in Germany just made this, I guess, but uh, excellent. So uh, from there, we're gonna jump into some live demos and show you some of the stuff that we're doing currently. Now some of this stuff uh, you may have seen yesterday during the amazing race. I'm just gonna boot it up, but. So the, the majority of the stuff we do right now is in mobile. Let's see, where can I, aha, apologize guys. And when we talk about mobile, you know, it's just the ability of the user to just connect the digital world to the real world and things that they normally would interact with. So we switch over to the, yeah, switch over to the iPad connection. Excellent. So what I'll show you uh, real quick here and what you just saw in that screenshot is the 2013 IKEA catalog. Let's see, I guess I'll just stay from right here. Uh, and what we did, this catalog was distributed to about 211 million people. And as of the uh, recent uh, study by a company called Distimo, this uh, app has been the most downloaded branded app of 2012. So we're just gonna jump. So the things we do, 
or did for IKEA are relatively simple. <laughs> so here we go. It's just you can uh, check out. I saw the uh, the lighting is is sometimes an issue, but um, so this is what we mean by augmented reality. We are recognizing an image, we are tracking it in space, and we are overlaying according content. Um, and if you notice, this is a, this is a wonderful uh, application because it shows the technological, excuse me, advances that we've made in kind of low-level client optimizations. So we're actually able to recognize over 100 unique images. In this case, we only needed about 50 for IKEA, but watch how fast, look at that. <laughs> look how fast that is. Uh, it used to take all sorts of processing. Uh, hell, in 2009, we could do it with one image on an offline system running an HD webcam for an image specifically designed for augmented reality. And now we've got these sort of just natural things. I mean, we had no part in the creative process of this magazine. They sent us the images and we did the magic. So you can see here, I apologize, the spotlights are wreaking a little bit of havoc, but, and it's, it's animated as well. So it's just, it's a way to just showcase product information right there. And I apologize, the tracking is a little bit, but even, I mean, this is a full model. You know, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't After Effects, as a Stanford researcher accused me of last night. Thank you, yeah. Uh, I wish that was it. We got some more stuff for you. So actually, uh, can we get a, a volunteer from the audience? I'm going to pick on Tom here because I loved his presentation last night. Uh, so Tom, what I want you to do is just hold this. Hold this. Just back up just a little bit. All right. So this is uh, one of our enterprise applications. And this is what we call the Mitsubishi Electric MeView AR. So uh, Tom, do me a favor and just shake it a little bit. Oh. You know, it's just no matter what, live demos. There we go. Okay, let's try that. We'll do one of these. Oh, no, we won't. All right, let's try that. Tom, just go ahead and shake that a little bit. Shake it? Yeah. <laughs> so that is tracking. And that means that, no, yeah, spin it. You're cool, spin it. Yeah, totally. Uh, actually, hey, you want to check out a different system? Let me just uh, throw that one on there. We can throw that one out there. Uh, and these are to scale systems. You know, and you can move closer to them, you can move further away. And what this was was a, uh, did I lose it again? No. What this was was uh, Mitsubishi Electric, who has a wonderful market share all over the world. It's a very, yeah, some of these systems are pretty large. Uh, but you see the issue is uh, these people would, would uh, in, in these external contractors that would go to these homes and offices and try to pitch the Mitsubishi Electric systems because there's more efficient, they're a little bit greener, and they have uh, individual controls, and there are a lot of them have a lot of more like electronic and uh, connectivity features than your st standard ducted system. And these people would say, what is it going to look like on my wall? And the contractor would say, oh, we'll pull out the catalog, show you. And that wasn't enough for them. So they came to us and said, we need a visualiza visualization solution. So we gave it to them. Well, we didn't give it to them, but we, you know. We <laughs> but we, we solved this problem for them, and so much the fact that they believe uh, uh, over 500 contractors have already signed up for this uh, internal uh, iPad and tablet uh, uh, enterprise ecosystem, mobile ecosystem. And what this is going to do is if it, it's going to increase their productivity, allow them to make more than one uh, or additional house calls on a regular basis, and they're projecting $30 million increase in sales just from augmented reality, just from this app. And that is based on every contractor selling a single additional unit per month, uh, which is, in my opinion, an extremely modest uh, prediction. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. My lovely assistant. Uh, yeah, so let's go to the next one. So, and uh, just real quick, because I'm going to show you the kind of stuff we're doing with image recognition, and then uh, we'll go back to the deck real quick. This is Junio. This is our cloud-based augmented reality uh, delivery system, and it's a mobile platform. This is interesting. Okay, Ugh. it's a mobile platform that allows you to develop augmented reality right there in the cloud and serve it. Uh, through a, a free consumer-facing app. So this is actually available uh, on the app stores, Android and iOS for iPad as well. And uh, well, this is a very interesting application because it combines a lot of features of augmented reality. So these are GPS sensor-based things. They're just uh, essentially little places. You know, we can look at Rancho Miguel. We can get directions. We can read the Wikipedia article. But also there's, of course, the vision, which is where we specialize in. 
That stuff's easy. This is the hard part. So recently we integrated continuous visual search. And that means as this camera is looking around, it's looking for augmented reality content. So I'm gonna let it find some augmented reality content because this, of course, is <laughs> so fast. Every time, gets me. Uh, you guys may have, it's just, I still have that childlike fascination with this technology. So here we go. And one of the reasons I showed this is because yesterday I was talking with Alan, one of the, the Constellation analysts, and I'm watching their group in the incredible race, and they're seeing this, and the whole question was to uh, identify some of the objects here in the animation, and they're sitting here and they're pinching it. And they're, they're trying to, oops, they're trying to, they're trying to zoom in on it, and I was like, guys, what are you doing? Just move, just move closer. You know, you can move closer. And this is, we're going away from these kind of uh, proscribed uh, interfaces. You know, we didn't, that's not an intuitive thing to pinch, to zoom, or to swipe, or anything. They told us to do that. Uh, Multi-touch and, and touch platforms have educated us to do that over the course of four or five years. This is a natural movement. If you want to see something up close in real life and you don't have binoculars, or you're not a superhero, you move closer to the thing, right? <laughs> You know, you move closer, and that's, the, that's some of the beauty of this technology, the ability to explore the digital in reality. You're no longer uh, constrained to a 2D interface. You're not sitting there looking down at your phone when there's all this life. You know, you get to look through your device, because that's what these things are for, right? We're supposed to be able to experience, not just observe. So here we go. So I actually, I don't know how I'm doing on time, but I'm going to go back to the, sorry? Keep going, all right, excellent. If he says to keep going, I'll do it. So we'll do this one more time. Uh, you guys may have seen this one yesterday as well, but I love this. We've been working with Lego for years, probably since about 2009 or 2010. And recently, their uh, Norway office had a big 50-year celebration. And this is the first real example of this kind of technology, the ability to, using a single image, uh, integrate multiple augmented reality experiences. So what I'm going to do here, once again, I'm going to use the, oh, lost it again. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Just going to go ahead and scan for it, and just pops you right over. I love it. Uh, this is essentially uh, image recognition technology that is comparable in speed to QR. Don't need QR codes. I apologize if any of you do wonderful QR marketing. I personally think that's an oxymoron because you have to look at that ugly thing. But it's nowadays, you can just do it straight with images. So we're just going to... We're going to take a look at this, uh, oh wait, actually, the thing is smarter than it should be for its own good. We're going to try this one more time, because it popped it into a different channel. So, it should, give me Lego, there it is, thank you. So, of course, uh, this was actually in a, a bunch of different magazines. Uh, there were two or three pullouts, um, so of course we're going to choose the image that we're looking at. Um, I can't speak Norwegian, so I have no idea what bigger means in Norwegian, but... Building. building. Okay, so like loading, that kind of thing. So look at that. Already, already we've got content. Come on. I don't know. Okay, the Norwegians are just killing me. I don't know. Uh, here we go. So there we go. Just that, you know, that is... <laughs> it's a Lego robot. He looks to, to be losing his his mind right now, or something, or doing the exorcist, I don't know. So we're going to keep looking, and, and we've got a, a Lego crocodile. And I apologize that you can't hear the audio, but they actually are like, Rrr. you know, they, they, they make noises. This is a fully integrated system, and it's, you know, you can explore it, you can look around it. And the whole point of this was so that people would explore looking for all of the different augmented reality uh, things. And of course, you guys all recognize that if you've been listening to anything in the past three days or so. You know, that's the White House, sorry, built-in Legos. Um, also, cool fact about Lego, they actually, uh, ever since the dawn of 3D content, they have been building everything in their entire product library in VRML, literally brick by brick. They built a 3D model of a, of a tiny brick, and they put all those together. So this is actually, it's not just when you see something like that, that's actually, you know, a thousand little VRML models put together uh, to make that thing. So there's that. So I'm actually going to show you some. I can keep showing you demos if you want, or I can show you a couple cool videos. Sorry? One video. Excellent. Oh, that's basically the, uh, the end of it. So we switch back to the slides. 
All right. So especially talking about Mitsubishi. Uh, so in addition to two-dimensional uh, service tracking, image tracking, things that you just saw, we have figured out a way to recognize entire environments, much like when we made the attractive woman figure out how to install her wireless router. We're doing this on a much larger scale now. And once again with Mitsubishi, so to manage the entire product lifecycle, not necessarily just a sale, but also coming back and doing support. This is essentially the future of uh, remote maintenance and uh, uh, guided step-by-step -step scheduled maintenance. But as you take it apart, there you go. <laughs> this is not After Effects. I promise you, Germans are not creative enough to use that program. Uh, this is all real. Uh, and it overlays it in real time. This is actually 3D content that is living on this system. And it tells the person step by step in the application what to do. You know, remove the manifold, uh, tighten the bolt on the fan. This is something that instead of uh, uh, your general heating and cooling contractor coming to a home or an office and saying, okay, I have to pull out this instruction manual, pull out this product catalog, figure out which it wants. If it's a Mitsubishi system, they just pull out their iPad and they look at it. <laughs> And all the rest is augmented reality. It's, uh, it's incredible. We've got a couple of, yeah, the socket wrench flies in, uh, of course, tells you how to tighten it. And this is stuff that we were doing with sophisticated industrial systems. You know, huge cameras, huge offline computers for processing power for people like Volkswagen and uh, uh, Daimler to actually do this stuff in garages in Europe. And now we can do it on an iPad. That's how much the technology has progressed. So amazing potential. And this is what I really mean when I say disruptive. So, and that's basically the end of that. Can we get a round of applause for 3D tracking? All right. So, oh. And then in closing, I apologize, I'm running out. In closing, uh, we have a, uh, uh, you can pause, I'll tell you when to play it. Don't just yet, you're spoiling it. Okay. <laughs> we have an enthusiast in our, in our German branch who, flies, remote controlled planes, drones, all that sort of stuff. I don't know what it is about that, that he really loves it, but he loves it, and it, it really, he's a huge enthusiast. So we thought, when we were looking at our recent tracking algorithms, just how good are these things? So we said, hey, Sasha, can we just slap our algorithms onto the live feed coming from your drone? He's like, yeah, I got one, you know, going out at around 1,000 feet. So we say, okay, let's go ahead and play the video. Uh, so we did it, just to see how it would work. Video? Can give one video? There we go. Uh, and it worked. This is, this is from a thousand feet in the air, our tracking and recognition albums. And if you notice, the camera is learning. All that blue crazy stuff was the camera trying to figure out what it's seeing. And now it actually uh, not necessarily knows what it's seeing, because that would be scarier than you could possibly imagine. But uh, it can distinguish the actual significant things, the feature points, from the rest of the featureless area, which would be the rolling farmland. And on the right side, you can see that's sort of the technical view of the camera moving, and it just populates it with more and more points. So <laughs> we really, at this point, you know, the sky is the limit for this technology. Uh, we envision, of course, that uh, by 2014, augmented reality will be on every smartphone. And these are things that we're trying to do to make sure that happens, to make the technology better, make it a more intuitive and natural experience, and make sure that not only every image, but every object and every environment is in some way accessible. Basically, browse life just like you browse the web today. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>